And we're going to be moving to the next speaker who's just asking to join the channel. Just accept the invitation. And uh, yeah, good morning, Nathaniel. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Yourself? Yeah, better than I deserve. Uh, yeah. we, are <laughs> <You in both. laughs> we are on time, so I'm going to be introducing you very quickly. Just make sure to share okay. your slides just to make sure that it works correctly, and then we'll move on. Uh, share my screen, share my slides. Yeah. Uh, I only see the share screen option. So uh, if, you, if you look on the downside of the screen, you should see the camera, the microphone, then it's going to be the yeah. share screen, and then the cog. So that's, that's the button you want to use. The cog, OK. No, that's audio video settings. You, here, the share screen you want. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I just couldn't read the application window. I'm so sorry. No problem. We have, you, you know, we have some time for, to set it up. OK, we got it. All right, so uh, folks, let's give a very welcome to Nital Coffin. He's a co-founder and the chief strategy officer of Closed Entity, and he's going to be talking about microservice security at the API level. So, Nathal, take it away. I'm leaving the stage. It's, it's all yours. Thank you. I appreciate you, the, the introduction. Uh, again, we're going to be talking about microservice security, what API security looks like, how authorization plays into that. But looking at it as a, a, a fundamental aspect of protecting the service edge, right? And so as, as we look at what happens uh, as we're adopting cloud, as we're, we're taking our heritage app applications, decomposing them, looking for digital innovation, ways to move faster, we're finding three different things, right? We need to move faster both from a feature deployment perspective as well as making sure we're not hitting latency, backhauls, et cetera. We need to make sure we're adopting these net new application architectures that are entirely API driven, often dependent upon microservices or functions. And we need to rethink what we mean by scale. And, I, and this is a fundamental rethink. We're moving into transactional authorization. Uh, we're looking at how can we build out you know, thousands of immutable services that are now distributed via 5G, multi-cloud, hybrid cloud, uh, even down into IoT devices. And so if we look at you know, how, how this has worked in the past, from a modernization perspective, right? We've had on the left-hand side, we have our heritage, right? We've got our older kind of monolithic applications. We had a singular ingress egress into, you know, that, that UI, the business layer and the data interface. And that, that was great because we could trust every, uh, you know, RPC or, or uh, internal transaction in between those different layers. But now as we move into uh, these microservices function world, right? We're seeing a mass proliferation of these APIs, right? And we're also starting to see the need to protect each and every API transaction, right? With a authorization identity at each step of every transaction. So it has to move into this transactional authorization perspective. If we take a step back, right? And look at it from, well, what are my hard requirements? How do I actually need to protect my services? Thinking about things like a WASP API top 10, Right. Well, first of all, I need to have that front door, that security filter looking at the API validation. Second, you know, and this is, you know, does does the payload of the API look good? Second, I need to start thinking about, oh, who is it talking to? What are these services calling it? Is it a machine to machine transaction? Is it a, on behalf of a user? Is it a direct client to machine transaction or client to API transaction? So I have that request authentication authorization. Third, I have the service that it's talking to. How do I actually give proof that that service that I'm protecting is indeed who it says it is, and not some rogue service or some um, uh, man in the middle attack, right? So bringing in service identity, service registration, service authentication and authorization. Next is actually I have these OAuth scopes, right? I have these tokens, these standard-based tokens, which are doing a phenomenal job at bringing a, a very coarse grain layer of authorization but they mismatch themselves as they have different development teams, you know, looking at uh, different scopes to, and grants to pre protect different services. Next, I need that requester identity validation. If I'm doing a transaction on the behalf of, and most of my transactions are, meaning I have a user who requested, you know, consolidation of accounts, access to a financial portal, et cetera, et cetera. And as I move into my multi-step um, microservices transaction, I need to maintain that requester identity across each and every one of those microservices. Next, I have that authorization, right? And authorization, again, being widely, why a very wide gamut of things to cover. From coarse grain, can service A talk to service B or API endpoint A talk to API endpoint B? 
all the way down to very fine green entitlements. You know, am I, do, did I accept the permissions consent? Do I have licensing? Have I granted access to individual um, uh, data elements for that application? And then of course, uh, as the third part of, you know, our, our traditional AAA authentication authorization and audit, having a mutable authorization and authentication logs, right? Making sure I have everything captured and I can actually go back and recreate the transaction slash parse exactly what transpired right or wrong. So I could do this for each and every service, right? Um, and hand that off to the development team and in uh, a, 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 I guess we call it the DevSecOps fashion, or I could bring it as a standardized set of externalized features to my services. So what happens if I build that, that snowflake? What happens if I build that unique um, approach to security, identity, and authorization, right, in my service? Well, what we're seeing across uh, uh, on large organizations that have, you know, multiple business units and even more development teams is they don't have a standardized and normalized way of looking at what the data is. And if they don't know what the data is, they can't actually protect the data in the exact same way. And this is just a super simple example where different development teams thought of uh, email address as a different attribute and hence built different scopes, policies, as well as authorization and grants around it, right? So one group one had it as read email or, or read mail, group two had it read email, third had it as read address. And instead of commonizing and, and using a standards based way of approaching this, they actually had built independent snowflakes and, and then they ended up building shims in between those. And so the DPO, the CISO, when they had to come back and report, how is this PII data, this email address being used? Well, they had to actually get back into the code to try and understand exactly what was transpiring, how it was being protected, was it following CCPA guidelines, et cetera, et cetera. It became a, a quite a nightmare, right? In just a three application teams, much less across 30 or 300 application teams. So that really brings this challenge, right? How do we bring a normalized sense of identity and authorization for both our heritage applications, right, that have that singular API endpoint into them, as well as across our microservices, which are now, you know, have these exploding uh, um, surface areas with different APIs, you know, for communication between the UI, the data layer, the business layer, et cetera, et cetera. You know, how do we embrace that heritage and then unify our approach to, to identity and authorization across that heritage and our next generation application architectures? You know, how do we actually start to mitigate some of the OWASP API top 10? Uh, one of the, the interesting things about the OWASP API top 10 is the, the, the vast majority of them are really wrapped around authorization. Number one, number two, broken object level authorization, broken authentication. Uh, so how do we actually start to protect those as a default, as opposed to trying to uh, train our developers or force our developers uh, to try and protect against them? Third one, CCPA, GDPR weighing heavy on everybody's minds. So can we normalize security for privacy and consent, right, for the, for the compliance aspects of it? Can we build this centralized policy management that, that covers everything from can service A talk to service B, that kind of micro slash nano segmentation, all the way down to, you know, what did a user consent to granting or what, what did the user grant to giving uh, to, to data that they're going to allow this service to see? And all that has to be centralized, right? Because again, I have to report back as a CISO DPO on exactly what's transpiring, but I need to make those distributed, that those decisions on what's transpiring on the policies and the distributed policy decision and distributed policy enforcement at the service edge to maintain on my scalability, keep my latency low, avoid backhauls. And so part of this is like, how do we rethink it, right? Uh, I, I know if I try and call my, my Heritage IAM or even my Heritage I, uh, API gateway, um, and I say, oh, I'm gonna try to embed all of this, this work inside of it. Well, I've gotta keep making calls back because it's a centralized policy decision point. So what if we start to break it apart, right? We've got hundreds of, hundreds of different uh, fantastic IDPs that like to think about uh, building sessions, right? And those could be short-lived sessions, they could be long-lived sessions, there could be um, continuous authentication as part of it. But let's understand that they're giving us data on how the user authenticated, maybe some roles and groups, right? And passing that over in the OIDC SAML profile. Then we have all this context that we're building, right? That could come from our infrastructure, that could come from our privacy consent, that could come from cybersecurity. And that is really what's building the symbiotic relationship for authorization that occurs at each and every API transaction. So as we walk down that line, we think about, okay, contextual authorization, that, that really becomes my center point of how I'm going to secure both my heritage as well as my future application. And I've got a number of things really pushing into it, right? I've got the open banking, the open data, the open telco kind of 
uh, pushes to how can we standardize data exchange between organizations, uh, simplify uh, access to PII data by third party providers, but obviously make sure that we have privacy and consent right at the center of that, because we've got to be privacy by design and meet our, our uh, incoming regulations. And that's pushing back out to how we're going to modernize those applications. Are we going to build you know, snowflakes? Or are we going to build a normalized model for approaching identity, session and context, right, and then governance? And then obviously playing that into the data security on the machine to machine communication. So it becomes a, a fairly complex ecosystem as we start to start to take it apart. And uh, part of that is, is the innovation factor, right? So as we look at uh, the paradigm of what has to happen in authorization, right? We have our traditional one, protecting the applications. And this is what can we leverage from what we've already built, right? In, in, our, in our enterprise. We have API gateways that do things like rate limiting and some very light level of, you know, can this user in this role do X, Y, Z at this endpoint, which is fantastic. Our traditional identity platform, you know, and this is the you know, ping for drug CAs of the world. You know, they take that one step further, right, and start to bring in a little bit of things that we call blanket consent, meaning I am consenting to use all of my data, kind of like Facebook and, and Cambridge Analytica, uh, you know, it, it, but, but I'm not actually doing it a, a, in a good job of analy analyzing it uh, or protecting the, uh, the, the user itself. I'm just, I'm just saying, okay, I have access to this data. Uh, and then moving that into even enabling the business, right? So as we look at what are some of the fundamental requirements of open banking, right? It's these dynamic data sharing agreements where I can work with third party providers and say, yes, user X uh, said they could, I could use attribute last name and share that out uh, for a mint.com for companies of that nature. So with each one of those steps, well, my speed, how I'm going to, how I'm going to <clears throat> excuse me, deploy uh, and my security have to go up because my, my edge keeps on getting pushed out further and further. So I need to support things like hybrid and multi-cloud. I need to look at extreme scale, meaning 1 million plus transactions per second, because I have all of these different um, application infrastructure ecosystems that are all functioning via APIs, and they all need to have authentication, authorization, our session and context present there to uh, successfully secure that transaction itself. Next is like, how do we avoid that backhaul? How, backhaul, I'm sorry. How do we actually uh, expedite the processing of those, transport, uh, those transactions? So if you look at it, you know, what's been happening in the past, it's been a monolithic architecture, centralized policy decision points, multi-step um, multi transactions to actually go back, get the data, consume the data, uh, customized integrations into applications, non-standard data sets, things that really aren't, um, supporting our migration into cloud native services, much less our ability to, to adopt net new regulatory requirements, whether that's CCPA or uh, open banking. So moving that into a cloud native architecture, well, what if I start to push all of my authorization out to the service edge itself with distributed policy decision points? Well, I avoid hitting the wire, I avoid that backhaul, I get sub millisecond latency because I'm doing all these localized authorization um, calls. I increase my scale because my policy decision points no longer a singular, you know, vertically scalable app, but it plugs directly into things like, you know, Envoy, Kong, Nginx, or even into uh, as a sidecar for Istio uh, or as a Lambda function, making sure that I have the exact same authorization regardless of the underlying application infrastructure architecture. I also need to make sure that I'm not recompiling them, right? I don't want to. I don't want to deal with the customized code uh, because that makes my application upgrades expensive, particularly as I'm decomposing them. So, externalizing that, pushing it out into you know the very lightweight proxy like Envoy or a lightweight API gateway like Kong makes my life much much easier because now I'm doing the policy decision within a piece of infrastructure that's already existing. So all of that really yields, well, okay, I've got different services using different authorization types. How can I get a look and feel for my, my developers and for my management of how these all fit together, right? And as I externalize them, I need to have this near natural language representation of what's going on under the covers. And so, you know, what we've done is we've, or we, we've built uh, the ability to uh, build logic chains, right, as well as visualize those in a way that a DPO, CISO or, can understand, right? And that spans for everything from, you know, can Spiffy ID, the service identifier, A, talk to service identifier B, that micro segmentation, you know, what roles are coming across as context for my IDP, who's authenticating that user, what's the AMR look like, how do I carry that into my actual authorization? 
addressing all of the different types of, of data that's going across the wire, you know, whether it's PII data, PHI data, uh, PCI data, and then has a user actually granted access to a service or to a third party provider to see that data. And then lastly, you know, what can I bring in from an entitlement perspective? How do I actually in, uh, uh, inherit data from something like Salesforce or Workday, right? So I can bring that context of what's already there from a licensing perspective and embed that into my application authorization, right? Making my life simpler, easier, faster to move, move uh, my development teams and move net new features uh, and cloud adoption that much faster across my entire uh, application infrastructure. So what does that look like from a logical view, right? Well, if I break a product session, right, then I can look at, oh, I'm gonna use my existing IDP, right? I wanna use my Okta, Pings, Fordrops, et cetera. Because uh, they're doing a great job. They're authenticating users, they're doing user management. It all makes sense, right? So all of that sits in what we think of as a digital identity plane. Second piece is, well, how do I leverage that into authorization? So how do I marry that context from my digital identity plane, right, my session context, and bring that into an authorization context? So using standards based like OIDC, SAML, SCIM, um, even queries out to NoSQL, SQL, or LDAP databases, right, I get to in, uh, inherit all of this existing data, right, and then normalize that data right at the front door. So email looks like email, across all of my services without uh, actually changing that, uh, to, uh, recoding those. I also wanna make sure I understand what services I have out there, right? How was the service registered? Who was, who was, uh, who's managing that service? How are developers authenticating as privileged users versus consumers authenticating as non-privileged users? Uh, how do I support you know, things like open banking, OAuth FAPI standards, right? Making sure that I have policies that are salient uh, for inheriting and, and processing exactly what's transpiring as I see a net new service emerge. That pushes then down to the distributed policy decision, distributed policy enforcement points. This is where things like uh, uh, these micro perimeter authorizers or, or plugins into your existing API gateways are really starting to function, right? Now they're looking at not just, you know, is this user in a role or what, what is the, the core screen scope, but things like logic intent patterns, right? Making sure that my dynamic scopes that are coming down the wire are processed appropriately. I'm doing policy decision of what can that service see? What can that service hear? What can that service know about me? Uh, uh, as well as you know what data, what contextual identity data uh, is relevant for that service to actually do uh, all of the fine-grained authorization of the service itself. Pushing all of that up into you know analytics, like making sure I have high resolution logs of exactly what's happening in my API gateway, what's happening in my authorization service, and then obviously how that relates to my business itself, uh, both from a business intelligence point of view, as well as uh, that, that needle in the haystack, that, that concept of I've got to find out what are my anomalies? What's going wrong? So as I build this out, right, well, then I can start layering on different types of identity providers, right? So I know that any of the existing IDPs, any of the existing authenticator uh, that I'm using, well, I can bring in Cognito, I can bring in Azure. And I also am able to bring in different API gateways, right? So it's no longer this one by one to one, but instead it's a many to many. Any IDP, right, that's, that's standards based out to any API gateway. Uh, so I'm, I'm able to, to bridge what's going on across different business units. I'm able to bridge what's going on across different cloud providers. I'm able to standardize right my, what my authorization context and security looks like without having to force infrastructure standardization. That gives me the ability to adopt net new uh, application infrastructures as they emerge because I'm doing all of this externalized from the application. I'm ensuring that I'm protecting everything in the exact same manner but I'm relating it to the API endpoint instead of relating it to the perimeter or relating it to the, the service itself. And this is just showing this build out, you know, into Azure Active Directory, Azure B2C, uh, adding in Azure API M, but you could exchange that, that with Kong, Apogee, et cetera. So it just works its way all the way down the wire of ensuring that uh, authorization, identity, session and context, right, are standardized across my different services regardless of what my underlying infrastructure and ecosystem looks like. Obviously, there's always that question of, well, what's, what's happening? How do I actually get into the data that's out there? And today, well, it gets published out to separate dashboards that might be in the IDP, that might be in the uh, API gateway, that might be in your SIM. 
Um, but how can I bring that all together and ingest it, right? Because I need to, to, to look at the anomalies. I need to look at anomalies of what's happening from a security perspective, but I've got to do it on the tokens that are going out there, whether it's a session, long live, long live session, or a transactional authorization token. I need to, to cross-reference that across what are my API endpoints that are exposing data? How am I going to protect uh, exactly what's transpiring in them? What types of OAuth flows am I using? Am I using a, 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 a deprecated flow? You know, like implicit, or am I using you know the next generation of flows like Pixie, uh, and then being able to to quickly use that to give actionable intelligence back up to my business, back out to my security team, back out to my development teams, on well, here's how we can upgrade, here's how we can fix, uh, you know, potential vulnerabilities, here's what we're seeing going wrong. Do we need to retrain the the ML algorithms, uh, or do we need to fix maybe um, the API contract? So bringing all that data back out and exposing it to the business as well as to the development teams becomes increasingly important. All of that really is about accelerating innovation, right? Taking what I have today, um, my IDP, my MFA provider, my API gateway, my API contracts, uh, my privacy consent management, right? Reusing that and building that into a common data model, right? That we think of as this contextualized authorization data model normalizing that data right right on login using that normalized data for better authorization decisions at the edge within, within your existing api gateway within your um your service mesh uh even within your iot devices pushing that all the way out to the edge making sure there's no refactoring because that's a you know that's a way to kill a project very very quickly and accelerating both your time to market time to value uh and your user experience so that, that's a, a quick synopsis. I wanted to leave a couple minutes for uh, questions and answers, and I will open that up. Okay, fantastic. Thanks, Nathaniel. I'm, um, I am monitoring the channel. I don't really see any question at the moment. Let's check it out. Uh, mostly conversations. Da -da -da -da. Yeah, no, I, I don't, I, I really don't, I don't see any question in the moment. Um, oh, if I've got five more minutes, I have more slides. I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, no, but you know, the people, people can always reach out to you. And actually, you know, remember that after the conference, there is, we have the special chat, but you can mm -hmm. actually interact together. I think well, we tried that yesterday. We couldn't go out. It was, it was it's dope. It's a great, oh, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I am really surprised actually on the level of the quality of online confidence. I was very skeptical initially, but like, it's, it's, it is just great. All right, yeah, yeah, so it seems like there are no questions. So we're gonna be thanking you with a virtual applause that you're not gonna be able to enjoy, I guess, but- uh, <laughs> I, I yeah, hear you, is, right? My yeah, mayor's, yeah. thank you. <laughs> it is what it is. All right, so thank you very much again. We're